Hello, let us now do a question from ISI past years. This is a question on intertemporal choices. So let's see what the question says. The question says that an agent earns W units of wage while young and earns nothing while old. So ideally what is happening is that, you know, I have, I can be either old, I have two wages or I can be young. When I'm young, I earn W. When I'm old, I earn zero. Right now, the agent lives for two periods and consumes in both the periods. Obviously, whether I am going to earn or not earn, I will definitely be consuming forever. So, you know, if I have to plot this thing, then I can say that suppose this is the age till I am young, and from here I'm not earning. This is my retirement period. Okay. So, you know, as you keep as you're young you keep earning and you save an amount of your earnings so you keep saving 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 at this point you know which is your last year of earning you have the maximum savings and then also after you retire after you go for retirement you retire you keep consuming but then you dis save and consume so you know your savings keep going down 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 so your savings fall till till sometime when your savings would become zero so you know how do, how do i do this while earning i keep saving some part of my income at the point when i have to retire i have maximum savings this is how we draw into temporal and then there is a fall in savings because in the period of retirement you're not really earning anything you are consuming from your just savings the utility function for the agent is given by this. So, you know, utility function is a log function, additive log function, and u is log c1 plus log c2, where ci is the consumption in period i equal to 1 and 2. The agent faces an interest rate r, which can be freely lent or borrowed. Now, this is something that I was telling you from the macroeconomic point of view. Let us go to microeconomic point of view and let us see that how does interest rate comes into the play. So, you know, for example, I have a consumption of C1. This is the amount that I consume in period C1. And then this is the amount that I consume in period C2. If I have to write an intertemporal budget line, which means if I have to write a budget line which constitutes of two periods, then I have to make sure that, you know, while writing the budget line, it is in the same period. This is very, very important. So if I say that I have to write the budget line from the point of view of period two, then I would say that C1 in period one implies c1 1 plus r in period 2 get this point so if i have c1 in period 1 and i go and save this amount in the bank then on this c1 you will get interest rate r so the total amount that you will have in the starting of period 2 will be c1 plus c1 into r this is the interest you earned on c1 and the amount that you will consume in period C2 is going to remain unchanged, which is C2, which is going to equal to, and you know, C1 is when you're young and C2 is when you're old. So when you were young, you were earning W. If you keep this amount as it is, then the amount that would you will get back in period two or when you're old would be W plus W into R. So I have written this entire equation in the form of period two, but I can also write this equation in the form of period one and things would just be unchanged. So let's see how can I do that? So let's say that I have to write my budget equation. So just remember that while writing the budget equation, the entire thing has to be in terms of one period. So period one. So in period one, you know, I consume C1 in period one because I'm not saving anything. I'm consuming the entire amount in period one. So it is C1 as it is. Plus, suppose I take a loan equivalent to C2. 
So in that case, this C2 that I'm consuming in period one only, instead of consuming it at period two, I want to consume this C2 in period one. Then this becomes C2. But this C2 is not getting in period two. I'm getting it today. So I have to find out its present value. So this becomes C2 upon one plus R. I'm discounting this value is equal to W1 also I'm getting today. So this is W. So if I write the entire equation in terms of period one, then it becomes C1 plus C2 discounted today because that is something that I was consuming in the future is equal to W. If I multiply one plus R throughout, can you see that we get the same equation as this? So whether I write it completely in terms of P1 or completely in terms of P2 doesn't really make a difference to me, right? So I have to maximize the utility of the consumer. The utility of the consumer is given by log C1 plus log C2. And this is my budget constraint. My budget constraint can be written in period one or it can be written in terms of period two. Is that okay? No, it's very simple. You just differentiate with respect to C1, you differentiate with respect to C2, and you equate them to zero. But because you have a constraint here, how do you form the maximization problem? So you form the maximization problem by taking Lagrange. So you say you have to solve log of C1 plus log of C2 because you have a constraint plus lambda you get this equation here right so let me solve that and give you the answer for that so here i have taken a lagrange function i have a log c1 plus log c2 plus lambda w1 plus r minus c1 this and then what i'm doing i'm finding out then I am you know, differentiating with respect to C1. So when you differentiate with respect to C1, you get 1 by C1 plus lambda. Then you differentiate this with respect to C1 and you get minus 1 plus R, you equate it to 0. You differentiate it with respect to C2 and you equate it to 0. The first equation gives you this. The second equation gives you this. You divide the two equations with each other. So you get 1 by C1 upon 1 by C2 is equal to lambda 1 plus R upon lambda. It gives you 1 plus R. So, you know, it becomes C2 is equal to 1 plus R C1. This is what you're going to get. This. Okay. Now, you have to also differentiate it with respect to lambda because there are three variables, right? C1, C2, and lambda. So, you differentiate the equation with respect to lambda. So you differentiate the equation with respect to lambda. Uh, you get this equation as it is, obviously. This is the constraint that you will get in this case. So you equate this to zero and you get this equation as it is, the constraint as it is. Now, instead of C2, you're going to put one plus R C1. You put it here and then you're going to get C1 is equal to W by Okay, so you put this value back in C2 and you're going to get C2 is equal to C1, 1 plus R from here. So you get C2 is equal to W1 plus R by 2. So these are the two equations that you will get for C1 and C2. These are the values. Is that okay? Now, after you have found out C1 and C2, the question is asking you what is going to be the amount of savings. So, you know, to find out the amount of savings, I just have to say that savings is income that you earned, total income, minus consumption you did in period one. Period one means when you were young. So, income minus consumption. Income was W and consumption was W by 2. So, you know, the amount of savings that I made was W by 2. And also, just to show you if whether we are correct or not, just see that if I save W by 2 and the interest rate is R, only then I would be able to consume W by 2 into 1 plus R in period 2. 
because you would get W by 2 in period 2 and you will get interest rate R on the amount you saved, which is W by 2. So this is the consumption you can make in period 2. So, you know, our answer is correct. That saving is W by 2. So now the next part of the question is, so the next part of the question says, first it says find out the level of savings when you're young. So the amount of saving is W by 2. And then it says, what would be the consequence of a rise in interest rate on the savings? Now, just see that the amount of savings that I got is W by 2. And W by 2 is not a function of R. Because it is not a function of R, there is no effect of interest rate on the amount that I save. So ideally in this question, whatever I earn, half of it I consume and exactly half I am saving irrespective of the interest rate. So my answer would be no change. So I get this as savings. And then I say savings does not change with change in interest rate because it's not a function of R. So that completes your answer. This is ISI 2013 paper on intertemporal choices. Thank you.